This is code.org and we are debugging the program. This program is supposed to instantiate, don't let these words scare you, the my painter object at the location specified by the user, but it has an error. Okay, so what the heck does that mean? This program is supposed to create a my painter, which we've been doing, at a specified location. So we want painter to show up somewhere in particular, but it's not doing it. Find and fix the air. Okay, let me hit run. Let's see what it does. Apparently it breaks. Okay, enter the X coordinate, and I'm going to say, let's see, X is up here, so 0, 1, uh, let's say 1. Y coordinate, and remember, we start from the top and count down, so I'll say 2. Enter the direction the painter will face east. Amount of paint, 55. Oh, uh-oh. Your code hit an exception while running. And remember, guys, this is trying to give me a line number. So Java.23. Let's take a look at line 23 for starters. And that tells us nothing. So that's that's great. That was super helpful, huh? All right, let's see here. Anything else? Oh, interesting. This program is supposed to instantiate the my painter object at the location specified. So how do you instantiate an object? I see painter, my painter. I see my painter down here. But no, we've never done that before, right? We need to call the constructor new painter. Perfect, right? It's fixed. This is going to solve it. Is it? Is it fixed? Is it going to solve it? It's not. This isn't going to work for us. But uh, so it makes the painter cool, right? But I can put in anything here. Mm, 88. And nothing. Why not? Why isn't it? Why isn't it letting us do anything with this? So that's cool. I put in a bunch of numbers. Our painter's appearing right up here. Doesn't matter though. Our painter's not going to respond. So we're going to switch this back to null because we don't actually need it to have a value. The reason we don't need it to have a value right now is because we don't know. We're letting the user tell us where the painter should be. Well, if that is the case, if we don't know where the painter is going to be yet, we can wait to call the constructor. So now that we have all of this information, right, as we go down here, how about we call the constructor now? And so now down here, I might say, um, let's do my painter. It's going to be equal to new painter. And now why don't I throw these values in here? Now, why would this work? I don't know. Let's see if it does. It doesn't. What are we mad about now? Oh, what did I delete? I deleted something. Oopsies. Uh, let's do a 2 and a 3 and a beast and an 8. Quitcha! Alright, so why is this working? Well, at this point, as the code runs, we are... A lot, provide the computer input, each of our input, each of our values, right? Because we have the scanner object that we've instantiated here. Each of the values are smacked into a different variable. So this is the X location, right? We say, hey, input, grab that last number that was entered, slap it in here. Hey, for Y location, same deal. Hey, for direction, instead of next int, it wouldn't be an integer. So we just say next, grab that from the input, slap it in there. Quapow, quapow. Now that we have all of those values, now we actually are going to instantiate the object. I have seen people do, and students do, if you wanted to. Now, traditionally, you declare all val variables at the top. It makes for readable code. It makes it um, more accessible. It's just what you should be doing. I have seen this. Boom. Would this function? Let me show you. Oh, I did some... Yeah, it does function. However, let's stick with conventions. You want it up here and all. That's the way we need it. And you want it down there. Cool. And now we can allow user input to determine starting. Onward. 